All right, guys, so I figured I'd give you another brief uh, topic to cover, and that is my program. Um, so I'm just gonna go over some generalities with my program and kind of how it's looking over the next three weeks. You know, I put a heavy emphasis on programming on this channel because I really believe that is what's important. That is what determines how you progress in the gym, how fast you progress. It determines how your physique progresses in what areas. So I really just preach having a workout program is extremely important and having a good workout program is extremely important and a lot of people don't have that. So I figured I'd just go over my program. Obviously this is not applicable to, uh, you know, what I do exactly is not applicable to everybody, but hopefully me listing off this program, uh, sh show, telling you guys what I do with it is gonna give you some insight. I'm sure there's some lessons you could take from this because there's generalities that apply to everybody. Um, so the first thing about it is, number one, I'm doing full body four days a week. So why am I doing full body workouts? Well, I believe, let's say you do a chest workout, right? By the end of that chest workout, you've, you're on your fourth, fifth chest exercise that is really meaningless volume. So what we're trying to do with full body is we're trying to cut out that local fatigue. So if you do a chest workout, you're locally fatiguing your chest to where by the end of the workout, your chest is so fatigued, the weight you're using is, bare, is pretty much meaningless. And, and guys, you might think that even though you're taking the muscle to failure um, or close to it with that less weight, that that is meaningful, but it's not. If you're not actually progressing and you're not actually using um, weights that are significant in comparison to your you know, your max, then you're not actually getting meaningful stimulus. You're not adding get, actually getting meaningful volume. So you need to take that into consideration. So with full body, right, I'm hitting every muscle group. So I'm only doing one, two tops exercises for every muscle group within a day. And I'm not doing every muscle group every single day. Like I'm not hitting quads every single um, workout. I'm not hitting hamstrings every single workout. Which muscles I hit determines, um, you know, it, the, the frequency of the muscles varies. And the reason for that is different muscles um, recover at different rates. So we gotta treat them accordingly if we're trying to maximize our physiques. That's one shortfall of push-pull legs in upper-lower programs, okay? Um, so yeah, and then also having that, that, you know, the full body basically just allows us to lay out the optimal frequency for each muscle, all right? So with the, with the program, I'm doing arms four days a week, okay? This is my goals, you don't have to do this, but arms recover pretty fucking fast. You know, your biceps, you could definitely hit four days a week. You could probably hit them more than that. But a lot of people are only hitting them one to two times a week, which I think is a huge mistake. And I've really started putting more emphasis on arms in the last couple of months because I'm thinking about it. And I was like, for years, I didn't do arms because I was, I was uh, fed the bullshit that powerlifters put out on YouTube, which is, you know, increase your close grip bench press, do weighted dips, uh, do chin ups, and you're gonna increase your arm size. And I didn't have too much of an issue for a long enough period of time because I got really long arms in comparison to my, uh, my body. So when you have longer arms in comparison to your body, your arms are taken through a greater range of motion. So if you can imagine in the bench press, you're getting a deeper elbow bend, which is gonna recruit more triceps. For you shorter arm guys, you absolutely need to be doing direct arm work. Even me, now, I, I kinda believe the bullshit uh, that powerlifters promoted. And because of that, I feel like my arms are kinda lacking now. So I'm taking the time to develop those. And also arms just look fucking sick. Like who does not like big arms? And I've been noticing that more and more. Like I'm, I'm really valuing the arms more. Whereas before, I didn't really value having big arms. Now I'm looking at it, I'm like, Every time I see a dude with big arms, I'm like, yeah, that looks, I want that. And when you think about it, if you're in a t-shirt, that is the first, that, that is one of the first fucking things you see. The first thing you see is probably the neck and the traps. The next thing is the fucking arms, all right? So forearms, biceps, triceps. Um, so yeah, arms four times a week, biceps and triceps. 
um, upper back four times a week. Like I said, the first thing you see when a, uh, when a guy's in his shirt, neck, upper back. So I'm, I'm taking the time to do some more neck work. Um, I eventually want to invest in one of those neck harnesses, but I don't have the money for it right now. So I'm just doing neck curls and I'm doing a whole lot of fucking upper back work because number one, it's just one of the first like things that you see. It's one of the muscles where I feel like anybody can make a huge change to their upper back. There's other muscles where it's, you know, very heavily dependent on genetics and insertion points. But I believe upper back is one of those muscles anybody can do. And me, I really just want to have a huge upper back. I think it looks sick. And I just always love training back. And you could train it very frequently because upper back is an area where hardly any people get injured. It's a very resilient muscle group. You could train it with a lot of volume, a lot of intensity, and a lot of frequency. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I want to grow the shit out that area. And then having strong upper back is also going to help in other areas, like with my pressing, having more stability in my bench press, um, decreasing the risk of injury when I'm doing overhead pressing, you know, improving my posture, that type of stuff. The next point is I'm doing just as much vertical pressing as I am horizontal pressing. So I'm doing just as much overhead press as I am benching. The reason for that is I've noticed when I do more overhead pressing, my shoulders just feel way more fucking healthy. And this comes back to the long arm thing. If you're somebody with uh, longer arms in comparison to your physique, then typically you will, uh, like I said, recruit a lot more triceps in a bench, but you will also recruit a lot more shoulders. <clears throat> so doing more shoulder work for you longer arm guys is actually gonna have better carryover to your bench than it would for a shorter arm guy. And the reason you should break up the horizontal pressing with the vertical pressing is because it's going to keep your shoulders healthy. You know, our, our arms are meant to press overhead, guys. You know, we came from fucking primates. I'm not going to get into this shit again, but we came from primates. Our arms are meant to press overhead. The reason why people can't do this is because people don't practice it. And that's why they get all sorts of funky shoulder issues. It's not horizontal pressing is not really the most natural thing especially when you're on a bench because you're locked into a fixed sca scapular position. Overhead pressing allows our shoulder blades to move freely, allows the shoulder blades to upwardly rotate, so it's gonna keep your shoulders healthy. Uh, so that's why I'm doing that. Next thing to note is I'm doing three week waves with intensity, and this more so applies to the accessory movements. So I got my main movements, and then I have other movements to back that up, right? I got the isolations, and then I got the um, self-limiting variation type stuff where it's like feet up bench press instead of regular bench press. Those movements, those type of movements are gonna limit the amount of weight I can do. And therefore they're gonna be really good for putting on volume and getting a, a meaningful stimulus without overly fatiguing the shit out of myself. That's what self-limiting variations are there for. With those, I'm doing three week waves. So what does that mean? Let's say I'm doing three week, uh, Three sets of eight, I'm gonna keep that, that sets and reps the same. And each week, I'm gonna incrementally add about three to 5% weight, uh, depending on you know how much, uh, how strong I am, how good my recovery was. I may be slightly above 5%, I may be slightly below 3%, but somewhere in that range is how I'm adding the amount of weight. So usually that comes out to about like five to 10 pounds, um, depending on the lift. So if you get the point, I'm starting off the first week with lighter loads, sub-maximal weights. I'm not pushing myself to the limit. I'm trying to manage fatigue as um, I continue training. And then the next week, I will add about five to 10 pounds. And then the third week, I will add about five to 10 pounds again. And now I'm at a point where I'm pretty much either hitting a PR with those accessories, a rep PR, or I'm damn near close to it, so I can't really add any more weight. At that point, I will flip those movements out and start back over, rinse and repeat. That's why it's called a three-week wave. With the main movements, I'm doing something more called double progression. What does that mean? So I will set out a rep range. So say three sets of eight to 12 reps. 
instead of just going and like on the accessory movements, just increasing weight, I will try and increase the reps first. So let's say I can only do eight reps with a given weight, right? And I'm gonna pick out a weight the first couple of weeks that's generally gonna leave me about two to three reps in reserve. And I might bump that up slightly as I go along, but I'm never really gonna go past one rep in reserve. I'm never really gonna go to failure. Um, unless it's like the last week before the deload. Um, but yeah, double progression. So I'll start off three sets of eight to 12. I'll start off at the lower end of that rep range. And let's say I'm starting off uh, 185. I leave about two reps in the tank at eight reps. So I get eight reps. The next week I'm gonna come in and try and get nine reps. Then 10 reps or, you know, you get the point. Once I get to the top of that rep range, now what I'm gonna do is try and clean up my form. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make each of those reps um, cleaner, maybe a little bit slower on the tempo. I'm not gonna go super slow, but I'm gonna keep um, a minimum standard of tempo. The reason I'm doing this is because if your goal is hypertrophy bodybuilding, you gotta have clean form. For strength training, powerlifting, it doesn't really quite matter as much. But for bodybuilding, yeah, you definitely wanna focus on cleaning up the form over time. So once I get to the higher end of that rep range, now I'm getting 12 reps with that weight. Now I'm gonna try and clean up the form a little bit more. Once the form is completely clean at that 12 reps, guess what? Now I'm gonna switch out the movement, okay? So that's what double progression is. Dynamic double progression, which is also something I'm implementing a little bit of, is basically double progression, but on each set. So let's say I do three sets of eight to 12, right? Um, and I'm leaving two reps in reserve, okay? So that first set is obviously gonna be the strongest, right? I'm gonna get maybe all 12 reps with 315, let's say, okay? So then the next week, because I got all 12 reps with that weight on the first set, I'm going to increase that the weight for that set on the next week. But for the second set, right? Because now I'm a little bit weaker on the second set and I'm still keeping the, the reps in reserve the same. So I'm not gonna go up in reps in reserve over the sets. So now I'm gonna keep that weight the same, 315, but the second set, I saw, I'm sorry if I'm confusing you guys. The second set that first week, I only get nine reps because the first set I did 12, I fatigued myself a little bit. Now I only get nine. Well, guess what? Next week, I'm just, I'm gonna keep the weight the same for that set. And then I'm just gonna try and increase the reps. So if you imagine, it's double progression, but taking each set individually. This is kind of just, this more applies to the hypertrophy programming. Uh, not as much for you guys who are just focused on strength. Um, but yeah, so double progression, uh, holding a minimum rep quality. So there's something, you know, it's not really, it's kind of just like a made up term, but it's called the rep quality to performance ratio. So basically, when we're talking about hypertrophy training, a lot of people fall in one or two camps. People either fall into the camp where it's like, oh, dude, weight on, the only thing that fucking matters is the weight, and you just gotta increase the weight all the time. Well, guess what? A lot of people in, those, in that camp end up having shit form, because all they're trying to do is get the, get, get, lift the most amount, of, most amount of weight, okay? Then there's another camp of people where it's like, oh, it's only fucking... It's only about the tempo, only about having clean reps. Well, guess what? There's such thing as having too clean reps. If your reps are too clean and you're sacrificing load as a result, you're sacrificing the amount of weight you could use, that is not conducive to muscle growth either. So we wanna keep a minimum rep quality where it's clean enough form, but we might push it a little bit, right? Our form might not be too clean, right? And then once we start adding those reps, now we're gonna go back and try and clean up the form before we then add more weight, if that makes sense to you guys. Let me know in the comments if that does not make sense. Um, the next thing about it, exercise selection. So each exercise in there is kind of carefully picked out. Don't, I don't have exercises in my program that are just there for no reason. Everything there serves a purpose. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna link my program for the next three weeks in the description of this video. So if you guys wanna check it out and you wanna follow it, by all means, go ahead. 
Not saying it's gonna be the ideal program for you because it might not be suited to your goals and it might not be suited to where you are as a lifter. It might be a little bit too much volume for some of you guys to recover from. But I'm gonna go ahead and link that and you can go ahead and take a look at each exercise I selected. And another thing about exercise selection, I'm constantly swapping the exercises out. So I'm not doing it every week type shit, but every three weeks, right? So like to give you an example, on Monday this week, I did a pause bench, okay? On Wednesday, I'm doing a incline bench as a self-limiting variation to add more volume to my horizontal pressing, okay? So those exercises might stay in there for a little over three weeks because it's not like I'm doing the pause bench twice a week, right? I'm only doing it once a week. I'm only doing the incline bench once a week. So I might keep those exercises in there for like six weeks instead of three. But say something like the Smith machine shoulder press, right? I'm doing that on Wednesday and Saturday. So now I'm doing that one twice a week. So after those three weeks, I'm absolutely taking that one out of there because after those three weeks, I'm probably at a point where it's like, I can't really add more weight here. So it's pointless to, to keep that in there and try and break through a plateau with the same movement because then you got to mess with all sorts of other things like, um, you know, how much effort you're putting in. You got to mess with like the intensity, the volume. And all that stuff just gets too confusing. So it's easier to just flip the movement out once you hit a plateau, once you can't increase the weight anymore. Or rather not once you hit a plateau, but before you hit a plateau is when you switch that movement out, okay? And then the last thing about the program is expect the volume to decrease as I get deeper into this cut and my recovery, uh, my recovery capabilities diminish. So, as you get deeper into a cut, your tolerance to volume decreases. So if you continue to try and do the same amount of sets, that's what volume is, guys. It doesn't really refer as much to the amount of reps. It refers to the amount of sets more so. So over time, I'm gonna decrease the amount of sets. So I might go from uh, four sets or three sets of an exercise to two sets. But I'm gonna keep the intensity the same because your tolerance to intensity does not decrease as much during a cut. Intensity is the amount of weight slash um, how close to failure you're going. So I'm gonna keep the intensity the same or even slightly higher to make up for the decrease in volume. And like I said, your tolerance to intensity does not decrease as much as your tolerance to volume while you cut. So that's kind of why I'm doing that the way I am. I hope this video helps you guys. I hope you can learn some things from this. Go ahead and watch it again. If you didn't understand something, go ahead and leave a comment if you didn't understand something. And yeah, man, I really think programming is super important uh, for all you guys, you know, intermediate, beginner, advanced. I don't give a fuck. Programming is, is what makes, is what drives the gains. You know, don't believe this shit on the internet about these fucking so-called fitness gurus talking about, oh, you know, it's all about the diet. It's 90% it's diet. Guys, if you have the fucking diet part down, you're getting enough protein, you're getting enough calories, you're getting enough water, enough sleep, you're getting taking care of those things. The diet part doesn't really matter that much. If anything, the, the, if, if your goal is just to be like fit, right? You just want a little six pack and that's it. You don't really want uh muscle like that go ahead you know hyper focus on the diet yeah maybe that is more what you need but if your goal is to put on slabs of muscle and you know have a physique like myself or have a physique greater than myself then you need to be focusing on your programming and your training so yep hope this video helps i'm gonna leave that uh that my program in the description i'm not gonna leave the weights i'm not gonna leave the progression scheme but i will put the sets and reps and the exercises and if you guys want something, if you guys want a specific workout program um, and something specific to your goals built out, go ahead and apply for my online coaching and we can get that going for you. The link for that will be in the description. But God damn it, subscribe to the channel, like this video and leave a comment with any questions.